Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Daha Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model. Today I'll be doing a review on the Gemini Jets Air Canada Airbus A321-200 in their new livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from Troy's Toys, whose store is based out of Overland Park, Kansas, here in the United States of America, and his website address is www.troystoysinc.com. But first, allow me to share some information about the history of Air Canada and how they originated before I go into details of this model review, if you would please. Air Canada was founded on April 11, 1937, where it was actually originated from the Canadian federal government's 1936 creation of Trans-Canada Airlines and commenced operations on September 1, 1937 with an electric aircraft carrying passengers and mail from Vancouver, British Columbia to Seattle, Washington then began operating their first transcontinental routes from Montreal to Vancouver on April 1, 1939 using 12 Lockheed Model 14 Super Electras and 6 Lockheed Model 18 Lodestars as the airline operated under its original name until January 1, 1965 when it was officially renamed to what has become known today as Air Canada. The corporate headquarters of Air Canada is located at the Air Canada Center which is a seven-story building that's located along with the carrier's main hub and base of operations on the grounds of the Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport, which is located approximately 12 miles southwest of downtown Montreal in the Montreal borough of St. Lawrence, while the carrier's other hubs are located at Toronto Pearson International Airport, located in Toronto, Ontario, Vancouver International Airport, located in Richmond, British Columbia, and Calgary International Airport located in Calgary, Alberta. Air Canada also has focus cities located at Halifax Stanfield International Airport located in Enfield, Nova Scotia and Ottawa McDonald Cartier International Airport located in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. As of February 2018 or at the time of this video review posting, Air Canada is currently the world's 8th largest passenger airline carrier based on fleet size as Air Canada flies to 182 destinations worldwide on 6 inhabited continents. It is one of 10 airline carriers to permanently fly to all 6 inhabited continents along with Air China, British Airways, Delta Airlines, Emirates, Korean Air, Qantas, Qatar Airways, Singapore Airlines, and South African Airways respectively with the operating fleet of 181 aircraft that includes 15 Airbus A321-200s with no unfulfilled orders pending on this aircraft. Also as of February 2018 or at the time of this video review posting, Air Canada is actually one of two North American carriers. The other one is Porter Airlines. It's also based out of Canada that currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier according to the International Airline Review from Skytrax Magazine and the Airbus destination code for Air Canada on this particular aircraft is 11. All right, everyone. Let's take a look at the front of the box. You see here, you start at the top part on the left side where you see the gold engraved Gemini 200 decal. You see the airline's logo, the Air Canada title, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the 1200 scale diecast aircraft model information as well as the item number information at the lower part of the box. Now you're looking at the back of the box where you see the engraved Gemini 200 gold decal along with the Gemini Jets information. You got their Gemini Jets social media uh, Facebook page information right there. You also see Air Canada's information uh, on this box here as well because Gem, uh, Air Canada gave Gemini Jets and ADI uh, permission to do this aircraft model, okay? Now you're looking at the top of the box where you see the gold and gray Gemini 200 decal along with the warning information on the top of the box. Now you're looking at the bottom of the box where you see the engraved Gemini 200 gold decal right there and also you see their website information right there. You can also go to their website, you see displayed there www.geminijets.com and see if you can probably get this model or any other uh, models you might be interested in or looking for through Gemini Jets. All right. Now you're looking at the left side of the box, you see all the information there, including the generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, as well as the item number on the uh, left side of the box. 
and now you're looking at the right side of the box the same information on the left side of the box that I showed you early on all right now you're looking at the front of the box we're laying down at this angle and the reason is it's a flat box I'm gonna open it up let you check it out here and that is inside what you see there the foam right there and you see that tripod stand that came with the model uh, I'm about to make an announcement right here from this point on I will no longer be doing no uh, model reviews with these tripod stands I got an alternative stand I'm gonna show you that momentarily but I'm kind of done with these tripod stands. I just can't deal with them anymore you know to each his own on that all right but this is the foam here I'm gonna take that off and let you see the model inside of the packaging box check it out and here's the model inside of the packaging box all right I'm gonna go ahead and take that out okay all right everyone this is the alternative model stand that I'll be doing my reviews on as far as narrow body models go. This is from JC Wings. It's a plain one. I just hope Jim and I just will come out and do the same thing in the foreseeable future. Okay, and then you come right here. See that little black pad in there? Right there, folks. If I can get this one. Okay, you see that black pad in there, folks? That will prevent your mouth from being damaged or scratched. That's that black pad in there is for, folks. All right? All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of Air Canada, all the details you saw there on the uh, box, the, the package inside of uh, the box, the, uh, the tripod stand, I choose not to do that uh, review with the stand, the alternative stand you see there from JC Wings. With no further ado, everyone, here is the model out of the packaging box. Check it out. There it is, everyone. The Gemini Jets Air Canada Airbus A321-200 in a new livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. This is my second Air Canada model in this livery. I already did the 787-8. I already done that one. Go check that video review out. But let me give you some information about this livery. I'm kind of feeling this livery, though. You know? Here it is. Air Canada decided to unveil its newest livery scheme at the airline's rebranding ceremony that was held on February 9, 2017 for its employees and customers across Canada at airports in Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal simultaneously as delivery coincides with Air Canada's 80th anniversary as well as the 150th anniversary celebration of Canada's Confederation. This delivery is also a reflection of Canada's heritage as well as its culture and its Canadian wildlife and although this livery somewhat brings back memories of Air Canada's very first livery scheme after it was rebranded from Trans Canada Airlines in 1965, the entire exterior look on this aircraft also resembles that of the medium sized indigenous game bird called the Rock Tarmacan. And the first three aircraft that began sporting this new livery look was a Boeing 787 8 Dreamliner, which bears the registration ship number C GHPQ. An Airbus A321 aircraft, which bears the registration ship number C-GJWO, which is this aircraft here. And a second Airbus A321 aircraft, which bears the registration ship number C-GJWI. As these three aircraft were painted in secrecy sometime in January 2017 at the Dean Baldwin Aircraft Painting Facility at Grissom Air Force Base, which is located in Peru, Indiana as the Canadian carrier expects to have their entire aircraft fleet painted in this livery scheme by the end of 2021. The Air Canada livery, including the red maple leaf Rondell logo, was created and designed by the international consultancy firm of Win Creative, whose global headquarters is located in Zurich, Switzerland, while the firm's creative center is based out of London, England. All right, so with that information out of the way, about the livery scheme you see on this aircraft. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let me show you all the details on this aircraft. I'm showing you. Let's check it out. Okay, we're gonna start at the front of the aircraft here on the uh, port side where you see the nose gears right here. The nose gear struts. You see the nose gear door featuring the uh, number 460. And that number displayed on the nose gear door you see there. This number is Air Canada's fleet number for this particular aircraft. You can also see it on the tail as well. Let's check it out. There. There you have it. All right. Now you're looking at the nose cone here. The pita tubes. You see the cockpit windows. 
the windshield wipers. I'm going to give you a better visual view of those later on in the review. And then you see that star lines decal right there between the cockpit windows and the L1 entrance door. Air Canada joined the Star Alliance along with United, Lufthansa, SAS Scandinavian Airlines System, and Thai Airways International as one of the five founding members on May 14, 1997, which consists of 27 airline members from five inhabited continents. And then you see the Air Canada logo that's displayed on the lower front of the future lodge right here. There. This is Air Canada's current revised logo which is actually an updated version logo that was actually used from 1964 to 1992. It's actually called the Red Maple Leaf Rondell logo in which the red maple leaf is actually inside the symbol of a rondell, which is actually known as a hockey puck. This, the, this um, logo can also be, side, be seen inside the engine column as well. Let's check it out. There, you see the uh, logo inside the engine column right there as well as the underbelly of the aircraft check it out there as well as on the tail fin of the aircraft check it out there ain't it beautiful all right and now you're looking at the air canada titles right there uh, above the windows there on the front part of the aircraft all right now you're doing these nice little black engines on here i'm feeling that black on these engines okay these are the CFMI dash CFM56 dash 5B3 slash P engines that are used on this particular Air Canada Airbus A321 dash 200 aircraft. Okay, you also see the engine cones right there, very detailed. You also see the little warning information on the column there. You see about right down in here. All right, now I'm gonna turn this uh, aircraft model around, let you see the front of the engines, and the turbo fan blades do not spin, but I'm gonna let you check them out anyway. Here it is. Now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port side where you see the engine strikes on this side here as well as over there as well. And I said mentioned the turbo fan blades do not spin. That's the only downside on this aircraft. You see they don't spin, but it is what it is. But at least you got a side view of the landing bogey gears here on the port side right here, the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear door there as well. Now you're looking at the engines on the uh, starboard side featuring the engine strikes right here as well as over here as well. Turbo fan blades don't spin over there as well, but it is what it is. It's all good. But at least you got a, a, a side view of the landing bogey gears here on the starboard side, the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear door there as well. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the uh, gray cockpit windows. Uh, Painted around in black as well. See the uh, windshield wipers, the nose cone. You see the nose gear lights inside of the nose gears, the nose gear struts, as well as the realistic nose gears. So, with all that being said, I'm going to take it back to the um, port side of the aircraft because there's more information to share with you over there as well. Let's check it out. And behind these CFMI engines here, you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the uh, port side, including the landing gear doors there as well. Now, we're still on the port side. We're looking at the um, little specialized wingtip device right there painted in black. And next to that wingtip device is uh, the red navigation light. I believe that specialized wingtip device is called... Uh, fence wingtip that's that's the same wingtip you find on the airbus a380s okay all right all right we're at the back of the aircraft here on the uh, port side i'm gonna start at the bottom part of the uh aircraft here on the back of the aircraft on the uh, port side where you see the airbus a321-200 decal Air Canada acquired and took delivery of its first Airbus A321-200 aircraft, which bears the registration ship number C-GITU on November 27, 2001, and acquired and took delivery of its last Airbus A321-200 aircraft, which bears the registration ship number C-FJNX on January 13, 2016 as Air Canada at one time registered and operated as many as 18 Airbus A321-200 in their fleet. Now as of February 2018 or at the time of this video review posting, only 15 remain operating in the Air Canada fleet. Okay, we're still at the back of the aircraft on the port side where you see the Canadian flag decal right there by the registration ship number 
And that flag decal represents the country where Air Canada currently operates from as the national flag carrier airline for the country of Canada. Now let's take a look at the registration ship number next to the Canadian flag decal. Registration ship number C-GJWO. Registration ship number C-GJWO. This is Air Canada's 13th Airbus A321-200 aircraft to enter the carrier's fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on August 27, 2002 and was delivered to Air Canada one month later on September 26, 2002. This aircraft was the second aircraft to be painted in Air Canada's new livery scheme in January 2017. Now we at the back of the aircraft still on the uh, port side where you see the nice little black tail with the, uh, the Air Canada red maple leaf rondelle logo right there, including the fleet number on the top of the tail. And now you're looking at the APU, auxiliary power unit exhaust right here. There's no hole there. That's what that is right there. As well as the rear view of the aircraft. Check it out. There it is, the Air Canada Airbus A321-200 from the rear view angle. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft on the starboard side where you see the nose gears, the nose gear struts, the nose gear door featuring the uh, fleet number, you see the Peter tubes, the nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the Star Alliance logo, the Airlines logo, the red Maple Leaf Rondell logo, the front uh, Boat bin door, as well as the Air Canada title. Now you're looking at the CFMI, uh, CFMI engines here on the starboard side, featuring the engine cones, as well as the warning information on the cowling there, as well as the landing bogey gears here, as well as landing gear doors here on the starboard side. Now you're looking at the uh, wingtip device here on this uh, side of the aircraft, the starboard side, painted in black. And then you see the green navigation light next to that uh, fence uh, wingtip device right there. Okay. Now you're looking at the uh, back of the aircraft on the starboard side, where you see the, uh, the rear bulk bend door, the rear bulk bend door, the AFT bulk bend door, the Airbus A321-200 decal, the Canadian flag decal, the registration ship number, as well as the airline's logo and the fleet number painted on that black tail. Check it out. There it is, all right? Now, before I show you the aerial birds eye view of this aircraft mount, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft mount in full detail, I'm gonna let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears, which rolls pretty good. It does tilt. It also tilts by itself, which is impressive. You also the nose, the nose gears right here. It swivels somewhat, you know, but there you have it. So there's a little challenge there, that nose gear, but it is what it is but anyway with that being said allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model let's check it out now we're going to start the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft start at the front where you see the nose cone the windshield wipers the cockpit windows painted in black and gray you see the air canada titles right there you see the high frequency antenna there you see the anti-collision beacon light right there you see the uh Wi-Fi box right there in 3D or the ADF antenna in 3D. Another high frequency antenna there. You see the uh, Canadian flag decal on both sides as well as the registration ship number. Another high frequency antenna. And then there's the tail right there in black. And then you see the horizontal stabilizers over here as well as over here as well. You see that little dot on the horizontal stabilizer over here as well as over there. Those are the illuminated lights that light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime. Okay, now let's check out the wings here. No wing walkway, but you got the flat, slats, aileron spoilers. You can see the warning information right there. You see the engine right there. And the strikes on both sides. Come up here. See the uh, little wingtip device right there. Same over here, folks. No wing walkway, but you got the flat, slats, aileron spoilers, what have you. The engine's there. Little warning information right there. As well as the wingtip device on this side here as well now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model where you see it's mostly 
partial white and mostly black on the here. See the nose uh, gear doors, closed ones. And then you see the open nose gear door with the fleet number on there, the nose gear. Then you come up here, another antenna there. You see the Air Canada logo that I showed you earlier. The anti-collision beacon light underneath the uh, airline's logo, the hole where the stand goes in at. The Gemini Jets uh, logo, another antenna. Pressure leave valves, another antenna. And then there's the APU housing doors right there, about the APU housing. And then the horizontal stabilizers right there. So let's check out the gears here, folks. See the gears there? See the engines under there, very detailed underneath. Flaps, slats, aileron, spoilers underneath there, as well as the wingtip device right there. Let's come over this way. The gears, see the engines, as well as the flaps, slats, aileron, spoilers, what have you, as well as the wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well. Now, since I showed you the area of birds I view this aircraft mount, as well as the undercarriage belly view this aircraft mount in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that nice little alternative stand right there that I showed you earlier. So no further ado everyone, here is the model on the alternative stand. Check it out. Okay, finally got this model on this alternative uh, model stand. Holding up pretty good. I'd like to know y'all opinion or objection. Should I begin doing it this way or just go back to the traditional way of doing the trial? I kind of like this way better, okay? I'd like to hear from you about that anyway, okay? But anyway, you're looking at this aircraft model from the takeoff landing position here on the uh, port side with the model on the stand. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft in the takeoff landing position with the model on the stand. Now you're looking at this model in the takeoff landing position with the model on the alternative model stand you see there. And you finally see in this model in a takeoff landing position from the tail cam angle with the model on the stand. All right. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and take this model off the stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right. All right. Now let's talk about the seating configuration on this aircraft. Air Canada has two seating configurated cabin versions that they use on their Airbus A321 200 aircraft. However, on this particular Air Canada Airbus A321 200 aircraft, it seats 183 passengers in a two class configurated cabin layout. Now, here's the breakdown there, right? From rows one to four, which will be from here to about right here, you have 14 business class seats in rows 12 to 40, which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have an additional 169 economy class seats, which brings the total to 183 seats. And finally, Air Canada currently utilizes their Airbus A321-200 on routes from Toronto to Calgary, Vancouver, Halifax, Montreal, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and West Palm Beach, Florida. From Calgary to Toronto, Montreal to Toronto, Ottawa to Vancouver, Cancun, Halifax to Toronto, Montreal, Orlando, and Tampa. And from Vancouver to Toronto, Ottawa, and Los Angeles. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model. This model is still available. Please get it while supplies last. I do have the 787-9 in this livery on deck. But it's going to be a while before I get to it. I will I hope to have that done by the summer because I got a lot of stuff to do, uh, do reviews on before I get to that model. And I also got the Airbus 330 as well. But uh, i like to know about this model, that alternative model stand. I know, should I begin going that route or go back to the traditional way. I'd like to hear from you. But anyway, please rate, subscribe, leave your comments and suggestions. And I'd like to hear if you uh interested about this model or any other particular model you might be interested in well. So with that said, take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.